I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and this is a comparison of the Fitbit Sense smartwatch with the Fitbit Versa. So this is the Sense. I literally just got this and unboxed it. I'm one of the first people in the world to get one through a pre-sale program. Um, and you can follow along my full reviews and some deep dives on the new Fitbit Sense at 10.medium.com. Um, so I literally just took this one off of my wrist. This is the Fitbit Versa. And I'm just gonna take a look at these two watches and compare them. I've been wearing this for over a year. It's a great smart watch. Um, I'm not gonna look at features. I'm just gonna look at the form factor, take a look at the sensors that are embedded on these two watches and how they're similar uh, or the same and how they differ. So firstly, form factor, the actual size of the watch, um, it's basically exactly the same. You can see here, uh, I think it's a little bit nicer of a bevel, a um, little bit more of an Apple Watch type of look. To the sense, this is a little bit more boxy. The screen is a little more obvious. You can see where the lines of the screen are versus this. Really, it's pretty seamless. Um, so, you know, overall though, I think pretty similar. One thing I think is interesting is that the band on the Fitbit Sense actually seems to have stolen the design from what I have here, which is an aftermarket band that's actually better and a lot more secure. So it's got this little um, uh, metal in this case, I think it's plastic here. Um, little uh, kind of dot there that goes through the band and then it just tucks in. Um, and again, this is an aftermarket band. My other one broke, which is I think an indication that this is a, a better design. So it's interesting to see that they've built that into the band for the Fitbit Sense. Um, now let's take a look at uh, some other things here. So let's compare these two in terms of thickness. Um, you can see that the Sense on the left versus the Versa on the right is just a bit thicker. So why is that? Um, the Fitbit Versa does not have a built-in GPS chip. So to get GPS for run tracking and that kind of thing, you actually have to sync the Versa with your phone. The Fitbit Sense has a built-in uh, GPS chip, so you don't have to do that sync. It's more like the Fitbit uh, Ionic. And... Um, I think that's what's adding this extra little bit of heft to it. A GPS chip usually requires a fairly large amount of space uh, to have the antenna and the chip itself on board the watch. So I think that's why we're seeing this is just a bit thicker. Uh, overall, though, not particularly noticeable. I can see it here in person. It's not even very obvious on the video. Um, so a little bit different form factor, but overall, I think kind of an update on style and um, just a bit bigger to accommodate. Again, I think that GPS chip is also, as I'll get into, a ton more sensors on the Sense, as you'd expect from its name. And it's probably a little bit bigger to accommodate those two. So in terms of sensors, let's look at what's the same between the two watches first. Um, like any modern smartwatch, they're both going to have an accelerometer, a gyroscope, that kind of thing to be able to detect your steps um, and other movements. And um, that's, you know, just sort of been standard for a while. It's something Fitbit has done really well, I think better than anybody else. Turning the two watches over, there's some other things that are the same on here. Um, you've got a heart rate sensor on both of them. Um, you've got the Stealth SpO2 or blood oxygen sensor. Um, Fitbit has been embedding those in their watches for a long time. I covered that again on 1.0 at Medium. Um, and they've just, just started this year to actually show some of that data in their app for sleep tracking. I think we're going to start to see a lot more of that shown, but both of these do have that SpO2 built in. So heart rate, um, SpO2, accelerometers, uh, GPS here, no GPS here. That's where the similarities really stop between the two watches, and I think that's where the sense gets really exciting, because what they've done here is to build a watch that's really built for health tracking. And again, in 2020, that's a pretty nice uh, thing to have. Obviously, this is sort of the year of, of stress and health being uh, very significant and on a lot of people's minds. And the Fitbit Sense is set up to uh, to do that kind of tracking for you. So I'm going to get into this a lot more in my reviews. I haven't even switched this on yet. But one of the features that it does include is an EDA sensor, which basically measures the electrical activity in your body and on your skin. And um, this can be a way to measure your overall stress levels. So I think it's probably built into the bezel here. I'm going to have to look into that, um, but you probably would put your fingers on there and it would take a reading of your stress level and you could track that over time. You can probably start with Fitbit Premium to correlate it to other things. So to say, if I sleep more, for example, if I exercise more, does that reduce my overall stress? Do certain activities 
change my overall stress levels. Um, again, really useful thing in 2020 to be able to track. Um, another thing that it's adding, again, helpful for 2020 is skin temperature. Um, so I'm guessing that it's probably using this big conductive looking surface on the back of the watch to do that tracking. And it's actually able to look at, um, again, skin temperature for you. And that can potentially tell you uh, if you're working out, if you have, are overworking, um, getting overheated, it can probably be used for caloric tracking, but it can also detect potentially if you have a fever. And Fitbit has actually um, launched programs to look at this kind of data and tell you if you might have COVID-19 based on your biometric data from the watch. So skin temperature detecting fevers, obviously a really helpful thing to have in this, uh, this crazy year. So a useful thing to build into your overall tracking. And then the final piece that I also think is really exciting here is they built in an ECG an electrocardiogram uh, sensor. And that's basically able to look at your heart rhythms, not just your heartbeat, but actually the rhythms um, and electrical activity of your heart. And that's uh, something that apparently was only approved by the FDA like about a week before this device shipped. So it should be on there now. I believe it has to be done through a separate FDA approved app, but you can look at your heart rhythms and um, that can detect hidden arrhythmias that you might not even know that you have. So if you have a heart problem and you didn't even know that you had it, uh, this can potentially detect that and, uh, and you know, give you some data you can take to your doctor to get a more formal diagnostic test. So that's potentially a life-saving feature if it actually pans out. And that's a really exciting thing, again, to add to the watch. Now, the final thing, uh, it's technically a sensor, so I'll mention it. I believe this is it on the side here. There's a little microphone um, on the watch. And with that, you can uh, use a voice assistant like Alexa or uh, Google Assistant, and um, you can use that to dictate, apparently, uh, text message responses to messages you get from the watch. Um, it probably could be used for other health tracking kinds of features, too, like to detect when you're asleep, uh, when you're in a quiet room, or if your room is too loud. We'll see how Fitbit uses that beyond just the voice uh, recognition aspects. So uh, good news now, there's something on your wrist that's constantly listening to you in addition to on your phone and in your house and uh, basically everywhere else that you're going. Um, so that's the Fitbit Sense. Uh, those are the sensors that I'm excited to try out on here. Um, I will be covering this a ton more here. I'll be covering this in a lot more detail on 1.0. So go ahead and go to 10.medium.com slash tomsmith585. And you can follow along my reviews there. I'm going to do an initial impressions review and also a ton of deep dives. Um, so you can go and see how this pans out for me. And um, you can also follow me here. So if you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps.